Hello YouTube, Facebook. This is I want to tell you teach you about this great under to me it's a great understanding of you know us human beings need to understand about this reality called the imaginations of our hearts. This is powerful guys. You know, I've researched this, you know, so many times, you know, in the scriptures that this reality is so important for us human beings to understand the imaginations of our hearts. And I'm going to go to Genesis, the beginning. I'm going to go to Genesis 6 and 5. And wow, when you research this, you will find out a uh, whole is powerful. But anyway, uh and God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Now, the imagination we're going to talk about is like a movie theater in our minds. It's like a movie theater in our minds, and our, the thoughts are like movies the thoughts are movies and you select the movie according to the desires of your heart and when when you understand you know uh proverbs 4 23 about keep your heart with all diligence this will this teaching will show you another important reason about keeping your heart now, the thoughts that you will come inside your mind is just like, you know, you watching movies in the movie theater. That you can watch, you're watching yourself in a position, you know, of, you know, of thoughts of success or thoughts of failure or thoughts of rejection or th thoughts of acceptance or thoughts of someone helping you or thoughts of somebody hurting you. Or thoughts of somebody you loving someone or some or somebody loving you somebody hating you or some or you hating somebody and or or in other words good memories bad memories and guess what we play these thoughts we go to this movie theater in our minds over and over again you know in our lives and what we don't understand, these movies and these thoughts are influencing our decisions and our behavior, you know, in our lives. And more importantly, to what extent is it doing that? You know, is the, the whole understanding of these, you know, thoughts or movies, you know, I'm using that as an example. Of what to what extent that these things are making us understand something concerning something negative or concerning something positive, and and here's the thing: what happens? What risk would you do concerning these thoughts? To what extent, positive or negative, to other people or to yourself? You know, that we don't understand, you know, about, you know, the reality of imaginations of our hearts that I'm going to show you. And we, it's like we create our own movie concerning, you know, what we do, you know, and what we did pretty much, you know, the past and what we do. We create our own movie and we don't even know in it. And to what extent that we desire to believe you know whatever is positive whatever negative can cause us to live our lives either in a in a lie or in the truth and what we don't understand that you know this imagination of our hearts dictates the the direction of our lives it truly, it truly dictates the direction of our lives. And we, 
And that, if we think our life and our eternal life is important, we will find out what this thing is really all about. But I'm going to give you some scriptures to show you, you know, concerning, you know, this reality. I'm going to give you some scriptures that you go look up, you know, and find out, you know, about how important you need to really understand the uh, reality of our imaginations of our hearts. And the scriptures are Genesis 6 and 5, Genesis 8 and 21, Deuteronomy 29 and 19, and Deuteronomy 31 and 21, 1 Corinthians 28 and 9, 1 Corinthians 29 and, 20, and 29 and 18. Proverbs 6 and 18. Jeremiah 3 and 17. Now, this all in Jeremiah right here. 7, 7 and 24. 9 and 14. 11 and 8. 13 and 10. 16 and 12, 18 and 12, 23 and 17, and limitations 3 and 6, D and 61 verse. Now, it's important to look up those scriptures because I, woo, wow, I went through them and, I, and it showed me how important our imagination of our hearts are concerning, you know, us truly becoming the people that we are. It's amazing, you know, but I'm going to uh, 1 Corinthians 10, and I'm going to start at the uh, fourth verse. You're going to find out that, of course, Paul is going to show you that this imagination of our hearts is our reality of our spiritual warfare. You know, if we're going to fight spiritual warfare, we need to really understand this reality here. You know, and this will this scripture will show you this, that for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or not carnal. It has to be spiritual, right? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, everything high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, I want to stop there. Now, the whole key, you know, word that you have to understand, you know, in this uh, verse that is very important that God taught me about spiritual warfare is exalting. Now, well, you got to understand, I did a teaching about what, about praise. Praise is one of the most important, you know, thing that you can ever understand that you do. You know, like I said, we can praise God or we can praise people and things of this world. These are the two things that you can praise. But, you know, it says, you know, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. When we start praising, you know, people and things of this earth and concerning influence, you know, we start, you know, thinking that that influence, you know, will more likely we'll, like I talk about the movies, more likely we'll think that that's the number one, you know, movie that we need to watch concerning things of people of this world and the things of this world. And we need to watch that movie to see how valuable that this movie is. It's the number, or more likely we make, you know, that the number one movie to watch in our imagination. And that is dangerous, you know. But we're supposed to cast those, you know, movies out. You know, cast them down. These movies are not important. People and things are not important. They're temporal, <laughs> You know, things that are going to be a bunch of nonsense because the world's in darkness, you know. It's part of the world, so 
You know, you need to cast down these kind of things about, you know, people and things. Anything that pertaining to people and things. And you need to understand that, you know, that, that you know, it will affect your behavior. It will affect your decision making. You know how you make your decisions in life. And, of course, your decisions of your eternal life that you really has to understand, you know, about your imagination in your heart. And now I'm going to go to, you know, what we need to understand, you know, this important two, three scriptures called Philippians 4, 7, and 8, and 9, that, that in, in the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus, Finally, brethren, whosoever, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now notice it said praise. You know, praising God is very important. Praising, I tell people, you know, your music that you listen to is vital, you know, to your praising God. And, you know, when you praise God, you, pray, you, ex you exalt His knowledge, you know. And, and that's why it's important to listen to Christian music, you know, that will praise and keep God's you know, knowledge exalted above the knowledge of the world, you know, that is going to keep, you know, the drama continuing. And we need to understand that praise plays an important role in that reality. Now, I'm going to read ninth verse. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the peace of God shall be with you. Now, the thing is, the peace of God is an important place. You know, it's an important place to be in in order to, you know, accomplish certain things. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Yeah. Now, oh boy, sorry guys. I got to go back to uh, First, Second Corinthians. And... So Second Corinthians in ten, it showed us reality. You know, I forgot to read this part. Sorry. First Corinthians ten and six, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is important. You know, the thing is, it's showing that the more we learn how to be obedient in God. You know, the more we can revenge our disobedience. See, and the thing is, those thoughts that, you know, that shows the thoughts of disobedience, those movies that shows us disobeying God's will, we can overcome those thoughts of our obedience towards God. You know, that we will start believing the image that we are created to be obedient towards God instead of disobedient towards God. But that's why it's important to, you know, obey God, you know. And, 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 and it says, you know, in the fifth verse, the obedience of Christ. Only through Christ we can obey God. Only through Christ. Do not think you can obey God yourself. Please don't. You're fooling yourself. Definitely. But, you know, but we have to fulfill the obedience of God to make us believe that we are supposed to be of the image and the likeness of God. And when we do that, we can overcome, you know, we can overcome our imaginations of our hearts and become the examples of God and, of course, come into the image and the likeness of God. So I hope you all understand this teaching, you know, that I'm giving you about imaginations of our hearts. And I pray that you will get a better understanding of this because this is very important that will lead us to obedience or disobedience and you know of course think on them things you know
To God be the glory to him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.